Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. This is Icarus Plays Enter the Gungeon. Now, you may be wondering why I've decided to do a Let's Play series on this particular game, and that's largely because since its release, I have become hopelessly addicted to this particular game. It's the same kind of addiction I experienced when The Binding of Isaac first released, and so far I have sunk about 17 plus hours into this particular game, and I thought this time let's put all of that, that, uh, <laughs> that lost time to good use. Let's make a Let's Play series out of it, so here we are. And for the purposes of this particular Let's Play, I'm going to be starting a brand new save file. So all of the unlocks that I've got in my other save file, we won't be able to use them here, but the benefit is I've got a little bit more knowledge with how certain items work, how certain guns work here, and how certain encounters will go. And hopefully I can uh, give a bit of informative insight to you guys about how to get around them and, and how to better your own particular runs. But let's face it, I suck at most games in general. This is mostly going to be an excuse to laugh at how bad I am. So without further ado, let's play and pick our character. We've got the Hunter, who comes with a Corgi. By default, that should make them the greatest. We've also got the Convict, gets angry when she gets shot, which uh, inflicts extra damage. We've got the Pilot, gets discounts at the shop, which is always useful. Really, really useful. And we've got the Marine, who is pretty tanky, a bit more accurate than everyone else, and can call in supply drops. But for the purposes of this particular run, we're going to pick the Pilot, because he's got a laser pistol, He's got funny bouncy hair, and he looks really derpy when he runs, which is uh, kind of adorable. This guy here is for co-op. You can't really use him, which is a shame on his own. And I don't have any friends, so we can't really play co-op right now. And normally, when you start your game, you'd enter that particular door, which will uh, teach you all the basics, all the things you need to know when it comes to playing Enter the Gungeon. But, you know what? Let's jump straight to it. Let's get stuck in, and hopefully not die. I'm really crossing my fingers here for an, a really genuinely good opening run. But because everything here is randomly generated, you, you don't really have much control. You've just got to do the best with what you've been dealt. And thankfully, that's one of the aspects that I, uh, I kind of enjoy about Enter the Gungeon, because even if you do get dealt a bad hand, as long as you've got enough skill, you can still overcome most situations. Sure, it makes it a lot harder if you if you have a bum run with absolutely rubbish weapons, but it's still doable. It's still conquerable. It's just that I, I'm, I'm not really that good. <laughs> so hopefully, in this first stage, once we've uh, got our way through all of these bullet kin here, an adorable name, by the way, uh, hopefully we'll get a few chests, which we can unlock using keys. You can see... Uh, most of my items and stuff in the top left-hand corner. We've got our hearts at the top, which are, which are actually crossed bullets. Everything is bullet-themed, if you haven't already figured that out. Uh, so, in total, with this particular character, I get six hits before I kick the bucket. And I can, I can buy extra bits of armor, should I need to. And below that, we've got blue bullets. Those are called blanks. And those are for clearing the screen of enemy bullets, because in certain situations, it can get really friggin' hectic, and even if you're you're pretty good with the dodge button, which allows you to dodge through enemy fire, uh, sometimes it means you'll roll directly into an enemy bullet, and that's where the blanks come in, that's where they become extremely useful, but I like to reserve them for boss battles. You can also flip tables, which will provide you a little bit of cover, but tables can be destroyed if they take too much damage, so you've always got to be aware of that. And I've already mentioned the keys, but that's just below my blanks. And next to the keys are the... I, th I think they're supposed to be like spent rounds, but they're the equivalent of currency in this game. And certain enemies will drop it, other enemies will drop uh, more valuable bits of currency, which you can tell by the color. And you can then spend those in the shop. And depending on whether the shop will have actual good stuff for you to buy is, is entirely dependent on what kind of run that the game has decided to deal you with. And, oh god, I hate the ghosts. Namely because they, they get an AK and they just absolutely spray it all over the place. And these blue shotgun bullet kin guys, I always get caught off guard by the fact that they, they fire two rounds in quick succession. Part of this game's appeal is learning the, the bullet patterns of each individual enemy. 
and every enemy has its own particular bullet pattern. And it, it just it just appeals to me in a, in a very primal way because I'm a massive fan of bullet hell games. Very very big fan of shmups. Again, I'm no good at them, but they just provide me with a really great visceral thrill. Being able to survive through an absolute hail of bullets just gets the gets the old blood pumping. And I find that Enter the Gungeon achieves a very similar feeling for me and, and manages to combine that with Isaac's style gameplay, which is, is just a, a, an absolute recipe for success, in my opinion. There's a lot of uh, really cool destructible stuff around here as well. If we find a, a library room here, you'll just see... Oh, here we go. You'll just see how crazy things can get. You can just get pages all over the place. You can make an absolute mess, and it's just tremendous fun. But these, uh, these spell books, you got to be careful, especially if they're a little bit off screen. They can, they can really catch you off guard and you need to be very quick on the old dodge roll in order to survive. But personally, the, the, the hardest thing you're going to come up against in this opening chamber is, well, the boss and the knights. And the knights can send a, a pretty, pretty big and difficult to avoid bullet pattern across the entire room, especially if you're new. So hopefully we run into one of those and I can kind of show you the the best practice, let's say, for, for getting around those guys. Oh, we got a chest. Now this, you can usually tell what's in a chest by the color of the chest. Now this is, I'm thinking, going to be a, a fairly low tier item, but you can, you can never really be sure till you open it. Ah, we got two. Two for the price of one. The gas mask. And we got an extra health bullet, which we don't really need right now, but it's always nice to have a few littered around. But the gas mask will mean that uh, I'm pretty sure we don't get affected by poison. I'm just going to check the Ammonomicon here. It prevents poison damage. But uh, I love this, by the way. The Ammonomicon. Very hard to say. Uh, lists all the things that you've discovered so far. And as you can see, there are absolutely tons and tons and tons of guns to discover here. Uh, and... Even in my 17-hour my run that I've got in the other save file, I, I'm, I'm not even close to discovering all the things that this, uh, this particular game has to offer. So yeah, if you're a fan of Isaac, if you're a fan of uh, Bullet Hell, if you're a fan of a big challenge, definitely check this out. In fact, if you're not even sure through watching this, I really advise you go have a look at Total Biscuit's WTF Is video on this, because he, he sums up why this is such a really good, really effective... I was going to say Souls-like for a second there. That's a load of bullshit. Uh, Roguelite game. I think it's ever since Salt and Sanctuary came out. Someone put the, the, the word Souls-like into my vocabulary and it just pops in there at just random points for no good reason. But this gun is... I'm pretty sure it's called Mahogany. I'm just going to double check. Yep, it's Mahogany. It's 100% organic. It fires... Pretty sure pine cones, which then explode. It also fires two tiny leaves in addition to that, which, uh, believe it or not, do affect enemies, do cause a little bit of damage to them. So it's uh, actually a pretty effective weapon. It's essentially a grenade launcher, just a, with pine cones. What's not to love? So, what have we got to buy here in the old shoppy? We've got the easy reload bullets. Pretty self-explanatory. We've got a weapon that we could purchase as well, the alien sidearm. Uh, it's supposed to be a reference to a, to a Halo weapon, and perfectly average, to be honest. It's not that great. We could also get a map, which will show up any hidden rooms. It's a little bit of a gamble whether that will work or not, considering we've only got 56 uh, uh, bits of shell casing here. So I'm just going to go for the armor, because we've already got extra health kicking around this stage. And we're going to go hoover that up before we go see the boss. And these, these points here are teleport pads. Once you've cleared or completed a room, these become active and you can warp between any of them. You don't have to be stood on or near a teleport pad. You can just bring up the map and jump straight to them. It, it's a really good feature. Prevents a lot of backtracking. And just, just keeps, the, keeps the game moving at a fair clip. So we got that extra bit of health and... Yeah, we need to go around here anyway, so we might as well plonk down there, get that extra bit of bullet health in the other room. And then I'm pretty sure the boss room is going to be in that undiscovered sector on the left in the mini-map in the top right. 
That was a confusing sequence of words. There was a lot of, lot of directions that came out of my mouth. I hope that was accurate. Apologies if that confused anyone. But... Yep. My, uh, my intuition was correct. We've got a boss to deal with. Now, there's three different boss combinations that we could potentially come up against here. We've got the, the Bullet King, we've got the Bullet Brothers, and we've got the Gatling Gull. I do not want the Gatling Gull. We got the Gatling Gull. Oh, balls. This is probably going to go badly, but at least we've got a few tables around here, which means um, we can flip ourselves a little bit of cover. We've got a few chandeliers, which can be dropped on enemies as well. And that, that gull is swole. God damn. We're going to be in for a tough time. Hopefully Mahogany here will serve us well. Does a fair amount of damage, and oh, I've already taken a hit. If you manage to get through a boss battle without taking a hit, you do get a bit of an extra bonus. You do gain something called a Mastery Bullet. And there's one of those that you can get for each boss encounter. But this is the best point during this boss to, to land extra damage on it. When it's stationary, when it's firing those missiles into the air. But you've just got to be very aware of the bullet pattern. As long as you're, you're far enough away, you'll generally stand a pretty good chance of uh, surviving without taking damage. But, oh, you've got to be... Ooh, I, I just wasn't taking any not notice of the health bar. But you've also got to pay a lot of attention to the reload function as well. If you're not doing that, you'll be caught off guard in a lot of situations. But can you tell the reference? Do you get the reference right there? That goddamn reference, that's Vulcan Raven. Learn your video games. That's a Metal Gear Solid reference. And this will fill up our ammunition, if we choose to. We might as well. We've not really got anything else right now. We've got an extra key for our trouble. We've got the crossbow, which the hunter starts off with uh, as default. So that's a pretty disappointing drop for the first boss. But, oh well. There's always the chance in future levels that we can uh, swap that weapon out for something a little bit more impressive. But that's the first chamber done. I'm honestly surprised we managed to get this far. Because I've not really uh, tried to play this game while doing a running commentary. It's actually a very difficult thing to do, so I hope you'll forgive me if there's extended periods where I just make noises as opposed to, uh, you know, dying. But the crossbow can one-shot Bullockkin fairly quick, uh, fairly easily, in fact. It's quite powerful, it's just that the, the reload is uh, not ideal, not very fast. But if you're accurate enough, you can take out a lot of uh, irritating enemies fairly quickly. Especially the uh, the shotgun Bullockkin. They come in a few varieties, those guys, and the, the, the fire pattern is slightly different with all of them. Some will do double shots, some will have slightly more manageable spreads, but ooh, we've got a statue! Now this guy, I'm pretty sure this gives you a little bit of extra health if you sacrifice a weapon. But I'm not going to do that, because we don't need any extra health right now. And I'm more than happy to use this crossbow as my, my go-to weapon for clearing out these standard rooms. Another thing I really like, I don't know if you caught it, but um, one of the bullet kin in this room actually flipped over a table for itself. And they will actually take cover, which is just a, a really neat little cool feature. And did I just... I just took a bit of damage from these little buggers. Ah. In the first chamber, those guys uh, don't really do any damage. They just uh, shunt you back a little bit. But in successive chambers, they will start to deal damage to you. So you, you've got to keep your wits about you. You've got to be very careful. And, ooh, we got the Huntsman. It's a shotgun with an axe attached to the end of it. Uh, we've also got a few extra keys and a bit of extra ammo here. We can afford the Huntsman, but personally, I like to explore the levels uh, in their entirety before I buy anything from the shop. Because uh, you never know what you're going to run into, you never know how much damage you're going to take, and you may eventually just need to, to buy some extra health and have to forego buying a new fancy gun. And it's not always advisable to have a crap ton of guns because it can get a little tricky to manage them in certain situations, especially if you're up against a boss or a few tough characters. You want to be sure that you're going to be selecting the right weapon uh, fairly easily and fairly quickly. Like these guys, for example. If there's a lot of snipers in a room, or this guy, you'll, uh, you'll find that having to switch through weapons 
will lead to you taking a lot of hits, which we don't want to do. But we do want to take this down, this guy down as quickly as possible. I'm really going to have to learn its name. Hey, there we go. It was saved by intelligent dodge rolling. But just because the enemy's dead doesn't mean you should relax. Uh, those projectiles will stick around. And I'm going to learn the name of that particular enemy. Because I can't just be making up my own names. It'd be amusing to make up my own names, but I, I don't like to do that when someone's put in the effort to create all these bullet-related sons of bitches. We got Gun Dead Undead. Those are the ghosts with the AKs. We got Rubberkin. Ah, that's why they don't hurt you, because they're basically rubber bullets. Teasies. That explains everything. And we got spell books. We got the grenades. We got the the King Bullat. I see what they did there. Uh, where is it? It's down here somewhere. There it is. Lead Maiden. That's what it is. Lead Maiden. I hate them. Now that I know their name, I can more accurately scream in the middle of the night when I wake up in a cold sweat after having a nightmare where I try to avoid a bunch of friggin' lead maidens. Another thing that's annoying to go up against are these guys. They're, um... The blobs. The blobs that multiply. And you don't want to be using a slow-firing weapon with these. You, you ideally want something fairly fast-firing, like my default pistol here. So you can mop them up in uh, double-quick time. But now, yeah, we're going to have to use a little bit more heavy-duty equipment. No! I rolled straight into that pit. But the thing is, a lot of the, the predicaments that you find yourself in here, it's, it's more often than not entirely your own fault for not uh, being observant enough, uh, skillful enough. It does, in effect, remind me a little bit of Dark Souls. It's harsh, but fair. And this guy requires a key to get through, but we'll need another key in order to unlock the box. So, we can take a risk here. We've got our lockpick, and we could use the lockpick to open this gate, but there's a high chance it could break. It didn't break! Yes! And now we can unlock the box, and we have got... A heavy bullet. And I'm pretty sure that means my bullets are gonna have extra knockback. Increases damage at the cost of bullet velocity, so my bullets will probably fire a little bit slower, but will hit a little bit harder, which is absolutely fine by me. And that, and that works for all of the weapons that I've got at the moment. You'll also get rooms like this. I'm not entirely sure what to do with these particular rooms. Uh, even during the course of my 17-hour save file, I'm just completely nonplussed as what I'm supposed to do with them, but I'm sure eventually I'll figure it out, or someone in the comments will yell at me, tell me what it, what I'm supposed to do with them. But yeah, let's go back to the crossbow. And yeah, my crossbows are now firing a hell of a lot slower, but the... They're now probably going to be hitting a hell of a lot harder, considering most of the enemies that I've got here are pretty much one-hit kill. It won't really make much of a difference, so I'm probably going to have to save the crossbow for tougher encounters or bosses now. But yeah, when it comes to bosses, you want all of the, the high-powered weaponry you can get. And right, we haven't fully explored this place yet, so we're going to do just that. Just in case there are any more extra fancy weapon-filled crates kicking around. I'm going to try our best not to fall into these pits as well. It took me the longest time for my eyes to... Ah, oh, damn! <laughs> I can't believe how close that was. I thought I genuinely fell into that pit as I was trying to articulate why pits are hard to kind of get your eyes around because the the, the kind of top-down thing here, I'm not kind of used to it. So um, it's taken me a while to, to gauge how to roll over those effectively without eating Spike. Ooh... We're okay, we're okay. I thought I nearly took a hit in this room then, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna run into a crate. Yeah! Nine times out of ten you're gonna run into a crate when you've got a, a dead-end unlock room like this, but because we don't have a key, and I'm a little bit wary of using my lockpick, I think we're gonna pay a visit to the old shopkeep, using the handy teleport pads, and we're gonna buy ourselves a key with our fancy pilot's discount. And we're going to see what's in the box. We're going to see what fancy stuff we can uncover. Ooh, we got a... Ooh, it's a bullet enhancement. Bouncy bullets. Ooh. 
So not only do my bullets also hit a little harder, even though they travel a little bit slower, they now bounce all over the goddamn shop. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty useful. Especially if you're a complete spaz like I am. If you're playing with a controller, by the way, uh, the game does afford you a little bit of leeway with the aim. But if you're playing with a keyboard and mouse, I'm not so sure it allows you to do that. When you're playing with keyboard and mouse, I'll, I'll just try now with the uh, the mouse, in fact. It gives you this, this little uh, aiming reticule, which I found a little bit distracting, to be honest. So I'm just using my 360 pad instead. But we've got one more mystery check to look through here at the top. Hopefully this is just one room. I don't want to spend too long around here because the longer you generally spend in an area, the the more damage you're likely to take, which um, is definitely the case for me right now. But, oh, that's nice. It gave me a bit of health as well as extra ammo. So what do I want to ammo up on? I've got a lot of ammo for my mahogany. Yeah, extra crossbar. That should do it. And I'm going to have to be fairly on the ball here because we want to keep as much health as possible on our person for the inevitable boss encounter. I think Chamber 2 gives you, again, three different possible bosses. Maybe three. Could be two. I could be wrong. Uh, one's a Medusa Gorgon style thing that can um, temporarily stop you from being able to fire your gun and poison you and all sorts of really unpleasant crap. And the other one pretty sure is a giant snake. A giant armored snake that can shoot a lot of bullets at you. It's a very tricky pattern. Actually has a bullet pattern that uh, resembles, you know the old mobile phone game Snake? It has a bullet pattern that does the exact same thing. It's pretty fun actually. And this is a cell. This is something you're going to run into fairly often. This is something that you will need to unlock in certain situations. Sometimes you'll just be unlucky and you won't be able to get the cell key, but these guys when you get them out of here, they will open a shop on the, the top level of the gungeon called the Breach, which will enable you to, to spend credits and unlock extra weapons and guns and, and fancy bits and pieces, so... That'd be useful if we had the key, but we don't, so you know what, screw you gungeon. But we're gonna open this particular chest, and you never know, this might have a cell key in it. It doesn't, it's got a hex gun instead. The hexagon is actually pretty fun. I'm pretty sure it can turn certain enemies into chickens. But uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of time to explore that. First, we're going to have to kill ourselves a boss. So, what are we up against? Oh no, it's the one that I didn't mention. It's the Beholster. This guy, this guy right here is probably going to kill me. So, we're going to have to be very, very very friggin' accurate with our fire and very, very skillful with our dodging because, as you can see, he's got a lot of crazy stuff he can fire at you. I mean, that fire... Ah, oh, jeez. I took a hit already. I was going to say, this fire pattern right here isn't too bad. It's probably the easiest thing about the bee holster to deal with. And oh, I've got lasers. <laughs> We got lasers. I'm going to use the hexagon. We're going to see if the hexagon's any good. Oh, it actually does a fair bit of damage, but... Oh, the Beholster's also doing a fair bit of damage to me as well. Buggery! Okay. We can do this. We haven't used any of our blanks so far, which I really, really need to start doing. We've got one hit left. We're going to have to be careful. Yeah, we're going to start using those. A few more hits. Hey! We survived. I don't know how we survived, but we survived. Oh, and we got a cell key for our trouble. So we can go back and actually pick up those poor people locked in the cell. And what have we got here? Brick of Cash. Secrets of the Masons. What does that do? I don't think I've actually come across that before. Reveal secret doors can be used to pay off unscrupulous snitch bricks. Ah, I have come across this before. So, there are secret rooms in Enter the Gungeon. They're actually pretty tough to find. And you can only really find them by, by bullets bouncing off certain bits of wall that will make them break a bit. But with this particular passive power-up, you can uh, basically see where the secret doors are because there'll be a, 
A weird looking character made of brick stood in front of it, kind of pointing in that general direction. That's a snitch brick. And I really need to teleport to that cell because it'll take me friggin' ages to get there on my own. And now these guys will populate the breach and I can buy extra bits and pieces. That's, that's something that I really enjoy. That there's always something to unlock. Uh, the breach will become more and more populated as you find more and more characters in the gungeon and yeah. It's addictive, it, it, it always makes you want to come back for more, and god damn, I, I just recommend it to anyone that enjoyed The Binding of Isaac, anyone that enjoys shmups and bullet hells, anyone that enjoyed stuff like uh, Nuclear Throne. This right here is the shit. But... Sod it, let's just go down. Let's go down to Chamber 3, and see... Just how far we can get. This is really good for a, an opening run, to be honest. I've really improved a lot since I started playing this because I could barely get past the second chamber. There is just a, a certain level of intimidation to this game when you come up against something that you you just have no experience with. But you have to just wing it and, and hope that your reflexes get you through. But uh, the more you play it, the more you... You reload and replay and encounter those same enemies. The, the more you learn, the more you can overcome. And, and that's... I just find that supremely engaging. So, let's use the hexagon. Let's see if we can uh, turn some people into chickens. Pretty sure you can. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure there's something else. There's like the witch gun that does chicken transformation as well. But no, the hexagon's fine with just bouncing off the walls, thanks to my pickups. And even though I've got the, the heavy bullets passive power-up, it, it still fires really fast. It's got a pretty spiffy velocity to it. Ooh. Oh, I took a hit. That was unfortunate. So let's see if we can avoid these pits, take out the laser spewer, and... Ah, oh, I hate this thing. These skulls, you got to be very careful. They home in on you. And uh, they take ages before they just disappear on their own accord. So you have to kind of lead them into uh, walls or doorways. Oh, I went the wrong way. We've got one bit of health left. Okay. We've got to focus. One more hit and we're done for. So I'm probably going to have to use... Oh, I fell off the edge. <laughs> See what I mean about the perspective? I had no idea there was actually an edge there, so that completely screwed me over, but well, we didn't do too bad. We got to the third chamber, I fell down the, the, the pit, which is just embarrassing, and we got a fair amount of power-ups. But we're going to return to the breach and pay a visit to a few of the new residents. Because if we go up to the top of the stairs here, the people that we rescued in the cell will hopefully have suddenly appeared. Yep. And this is the acquisitions department. Basically, you can unlock stuff from here. It won't immediately give you the item, but it will add it to the, the gungeon itself. So you have a greater chance of running into this stuff via chests, via random drops, uh, via via shops, and we've got three hegemony credits. These are things that you obtain largely from defeating bosses, and they, they don't really diminish uh, through repeated encounters with bosses. It, it's basically based around the fact that you will be doing this over and over and over, and more and more stuff will be unlocked as a result. But if you manage to beat a boss without taking a hit, you will get more hegemony credits as well as uh, I think extra health as well, so there's uh, definitely a big incentive here to, to get good, as they say. But yeah, this has been a, a fairly sizable episode. It's been about, what is that, half an hour? The runs are, are pretty exhausting, to be honest, especially for the first time around. But the more you play it, the more you get into it, the more drive you have to, to overcome and conquer it. And I just absolutely love Enter the Gungeon to bits. And... Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as, as, well as any uh, helpful suggestions, any things that you think I'm completely faffing up. This has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Icarus out.